David Keenan, welcome to Australian Musician. Thanks for having me on, Greg. Uh, heading towards the end of uh, 2023, it's been a huge year for you. Uh, how do you look back on the past 12 months uh, in the context of your career? Yeah, I'm just with a lot of uh, gratitude because I think this year I took the most risks, you know, in terms of um, releasing records independently and um, going to new places musically with the band, you know, getting a new band of jazz musicians together and really striking on something important. I think I've been looking for, for many years, that kind of fluidity and spontaneity and improv with musicians that I love uh, really frees me up in terms of performance. Um, yeah, I did, did a lot myself this year just with the help of my partner, you know, without any management or label. And I think every every victory, every little victory means more when, you, when you're doing that yourself without, uh, without big backing, you know, and just the, the belief from people coming to the gigs, getting to play the National Concert Hall in Dublin was, uh, felt like the culmination of years of, um, just just building and, and chipping away and, and, and learning uh, my trade, you know. So um, it's been a great year. It's been a really great year. And to finish it as well with the, the theatre run that we did, uh, which is kind of like a, an amalgamation gig with a play, comedy, music, poetry. You know, that felt like a real kind of roll of the dice. But again, people embraced it. So I, and when I'm doing these things and taking these risks, I know that I'm in the right space creatively. Yeah. So going way back, uh, who were the artists that inspired you growing up? Um, I think voices initially that haunted me, you know, when I was about three or four, I remember my father trying to brainwash me into country and Western music, you know, because there's a kind of a, there's a phenomenon around the border counties of Ireland in particular, where there must be the rural life aspect to it, but country music is really, really big, you know, and um, I remember just the stories, um, just the stories, you know, like these anti-hero stories of kind of loss and redemption. And uh, I, th I think in hindsight that had an effect. Um, but voices that haunted me like Billie Holiday and Ronnie Drew and um, then later the likes of Leonard Cohen and uh, Nick Cave, um uh, and people that just created worlds like that, you know. Um, people created worlds that I wanted to live inside, I think, in the songs, you know. Dylan and, uh, and uh, yeah, people like that. Voices that haunted me and, and, and people that opened up worlds, I think, of imagination, you know. So uh, songwriters like that. What about local music? I mean, Ireland is a small place but has such a rich history of great artists uh did any local artists affect you well there was one guy in particular jinx lennon from my hometown and he he's released about 20 records and uh every record is different and i think i discovered him when i was 13 the same year i discovered damien dempsey from dublin and uh, the two of them were really teaching me about stuff i wasn't hearing in school it was like reality for the first time you know and uh reality in a kind of a in a, in a world dominated by adults at that time, you know, and teachers that I didn't believe, you know, were telling me the truth, you know, and uh, so I found them and uh, I found, uh, you know, the, the Pogues and I found um, Liam and Wayne, the Hollis Flowers, you know, and organic musicians like that. And of course, like the, uh, the trad tradition and the Shano's tradition and just the storytelling tradition is in, is in the family and you know, in my family, you know, just a family of storytellers, you know, so it all kind of meshed into this one resource that I could tap into around that age. You know. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned uh, Shane McGowan, the Pogues. Uh, Shane recently passed away. I, I believe you're asked to participate in the, um, in the day, the, the funeral. Yeah, there was a couple of different gatherings, uh, one in Tipperary and one in Dublin, and uh, a group of musicians, you know, I, I was one of many, I, was, I wasn't was nothing special, but um, he was a chieftain and he, he was he was given a send-off that was fitting, you know. Yeah. Um, some artists approach songwriting like a job uh, and sit down for X amount of hours a day to see what they come up with. Others can only write when they're inspired. 
where do you sit? I really admire the discipline of that. Like I've heard Nick Cave saying he goes into his office at 9 a.m. and he leaves at 5. And I like the idea of that. I really do. And uh, maybe if I can, you know, someday if I can afford an office, <laughs> I'll, I'll attempt that. But I think I just write throughout the day. I've written already this morning. It's a matter of clearing the head out, you know, and, and seeing what happens. A lot of it is just maintenance. But then uh, there's always a couple of ideas that are on the brew, on the boil. And uh, so I'm constantly just taking notes all the time. And you have the antenna up if you hear a line or a conversation or if you make an observation or uh, something's coming up internally that you want to kind of address. The pen and the paper have always been like the best friends, you know. Yeah. Are you good at knowing when a song is done and to leave it alone? Yeah, maybe too much. If, if my problem is needing to go back and edit it a bit more, you know, but uh, I'm trying to get better at that as well. But when songs kind of come out fully formed, you, you kind of, you're a bit wary of to, you know, not to tamper with them too much. But um, I really do think it's a craft, you know, and uh, I, I've always considered it to be a craft, you know, Um I don't know if that's spoken about enough these days, you know, just the craft of the craft of anything, really. I think with the advent of TikTok and these things, the, just the concept of craft doesn't seem to be uh, spoken about enough, I don't think, you know. So. Yeah. Uh, you're a poet as well as a songwriter. What are the factors that turn a poem into a song or a, a poem being left on its own? What, what are the things you consider? I think... Uh, Maybe poetry is something that you kind of you relish on your own, you know, in solitude. And uh, there's certain things that just need to be, you know, certain things need to be read alone, I think, you know. And then there's 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 other pieces that, that come out full of music, you know. The words are full of music and full of musicality and that kind of demand to be, demand to be sung, you know. Or uh, I've tried to, to put a couple of pieces to music and, to take on this this different uh, different energy, you know. So, uh, but whatever I don't know what it is, whatever internal intuition, um, or whatever internal bonds with with you know that thing, uh, it kind of decides which is which and how it how it how it should be delivered, you know. Yeah. Um. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe it was around 2017 uh, that you played outside of Ireland for the first time. Um, what has travel done for your, uh, what does travel do for you uh, in, in regard to inspiration and, and creativity? I think it, it just, you're in motion, you're in flux and, uh, and it's just um, like, I mean, before 2017, I think it was Holland was the first place I went to um, apart from the UK, but it was, it was, it was a festival in the Netherlands and, uh, you know the trains in Europe and, and and the smells and the food and there's just a wonderment. You know, I'm like a real childlike wonderment of just traveling because before 2017 I was you know I was really broke. You know, and and the thoughts of traveling or the thoughts of getting to America were just pipe dreams, really, because it was a kind of a just financial low self esteem. You know what I mean? I was I was. Uh, I was living with my grandfather, you know, there was no real prospects aside from the hope that I had that there was something in the, in these songs that might resonate because they resonated with me. And so when I got traveling and, you know, there was no taking it for granted. It was, I'd spent very little time on airplanes and things like that. So you're out, you're traveling, you're, you're getting welcomed. There's, there's, there's some bottles of water, there's towels, there's food in the dressing room. And there's, uh, I think I remember doing that sound check in a lowlands festival in the Netherlands and, uh, there was 20 people at the sound check and I thought, well, geez, if I get 30 people at this for the gig, I'll be doing well, you know, and whatever way the festival was structured, the Dutch seemed to like get them, like to get their money's worth. So the, the, the barn was full by the time I came out and it was just this euphoric thing. And I broke three strings and I finished the set just with the tree, you know, <laughs> but, you know three strings. And it's just, it's that, it's that wonderment that, um, one of my heroes is Arthur Rambeau. And, and I went to visit his home in, in, uh, France last year and uh, the travels of, of an itinerant was a, a pamphlet that I was given at the museum and it's like that I just feel like a, a, I'm a nomad and I get to I get to document all these things as I as I make my way you know and don't take it for granted at all 
Yeah. Uh, you're coming to Australia for the first time in, in January. Uh, what are you looking forward to yeah. most? Again, just being in a, in a new place for the first time. It hasn't happened since, um, you know, since I went to America five years ago for the first time in that sense of, I, I don't know what to expect. I obviously know some of the history and the, and the connection between Ireland and Australia, some of the bands that I've loved over the years. But um, apart from that, I still, I still know very little. And I'm kind of, I'm, I like that as well because, um, you know, it's, it's, it's an open book, you know. I'm definitely there's definitely going to be songs. Maybe there's going to be an Australian EP at the end of it or something. But uh, for sure, the nature and uh, getting to experience summer in January is going to be a trip. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about your main guitar. Uh, what is it? And is there any uh, sentimental story be behind how you acquired it? I'm playing uh, a Martin, and it's like a classical. Uh, it's a classical shape, Martin, but a very slight cutaway. And I got it about four years ago, and I'm not, I'm not a guitar savvy head, so I couldn't tell you. But I know that when I when uh, I got this guitar, the guy that that gave it to me um, in the shop was saying, you know, there's only twelve of these that were kind of made, and uh, and I just bonded with it immediately. You know, I've had that a few times with guitars. Um, now it's all cracked. I have duct tape on it, but it sounds beautiful. Um, really rich, rich sound, and uh, it's a really slim neck, so I can I can do unusual things, uh, even with my tom on this guitar. Um, so I'll be bringing that with me to Australia, and then um, I do have a tack of mine that I was given in America a few years ago by Glenn Hansard, and. Uh, he, it, that was a spare that he had. I think they made for him because he's famous for having the the the, the hole in the tack of mine because it's soft wood, and uh, I have letters and everything painted on that, and so that's pretty sentimental as well. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I've got a couple of electrics as well. I've got a 1959 silver tone guitar, which looks like it came out of Tom Waits' shed. It's all rusted, and it's like. You know, half size guitar, and there's a lipstick pickup in it, and it's it's a real, it's a kind of a real gnarly little thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, in 2022, you released an album called Crude. Uh, then this year, you released an EP, uh, Crude Boyo. What what's the connection? Yeah. Between, what's the connection between the two? Uh, Crude Boyo just felt like an extension of this kind of uh, garage sounding thing that i wanted to, to 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 make the only difference being i want i wanted to bring in some of the the new musicians the new musical textures so like saxophone and double bass and, and some some jazz elements and see what what happened in this kind of loose organic thing um and i was joking to myself and I, I thought you know if a rude boy was if a rude boy was from the irish border what would he be called so crude boy <laughs> rude boy was born you know yeah. Uh, Christmas, Christmas or Rumi is uh, your current uh, single recorded with your partner, yeah. Ivan uh, Kilgallen. Uh, in general, yeah. do, do you use each other as a sounding board for your creative ideas? Yeah, I think over the last last few years, Greg, yeah, it has been that way because you're living in close quarters with somebody and she's an artist and uh, she writes, playwright. And I suppose... I think me and Ivan's first date was uh, two days before I launched my first album in the Olympia in Dublin. So she knew what she was getting into. <laughs> and uh, and she's seen that record, you know, being released, the following record being written and, and born, the third and the fourth. So, so yeah, I mean, this song, it just, it, it was going that way, put it that way. And uh, it's the Christmas we've lived, um, uh, the song. And... Uh, that tour that I said I was on, the Irish theatre tour, she was doing the one woman play before our set and then the band would come out and it would mesh. So it's been really creative, you know, and because she has a, she's an eccentric head, she understands my eccentric head and it seems to work. You know. yeah. Until now, anyway. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned your band uh, quite a few times. What were you looking for in the musicians that you uh, finally acquired? It's, you know, I've had some great, 
iterations of bands from the from even before the first album. But I think to to in a selfish way, what's what works best for me is when the music isn't boxed in and it's not gridded. And I don't know if that makes sense, but you know, we don't use in ears or or you know clicks. It's very much you know, wedges on the ground and feeling the, the music. And uh, I think with jazz musicians, you can just, because I can go off on a tangent with a lyric, the lyric is like an instrument for me as well. And the voice, um, jazz musicians just slot underneath and they can just deal with the the time signature changes and they can deal with it being very loose and they can deal with not rehearsing a lot as well. You know, uh, the drummer says, you know, he, he loves practicing, but he hates rehearsals and that works for me. So I don't have to pay them to rehearse. You know, <laughs> So there's this really exciting thing because if you're playing, obviously uh, the new records, you have the new records, but the thing what I love about live, live gigs is it's different every time reality happens. It's not scripted you know, you're cooking up with alchemy because there's people in the room. So there needs to be spontaneity and it needs to be full of risk. Otherwise it becomes very just formulaic and boring and you're just playing the same old chords. And and that's not what I want. I want to be educated by every gig, you know, in a different way. So you got to get guys that are as mad as you to embrace that. And I think these jazzers are kind of like that. They play in clubs, you know, every week and we get together and, and, uh, they're helping me learn as well about you know different uh different modes of writing and so it's taken a while to get there but i'm really really happy with the band and uh it's it's great fun so maybe that can come with you next time yeah please god yeah if we do well if i sell if i sell enough t-shirts now greg in this tour i'll be able to afford maybe the bass player next time <laughs> so where are you at with your next uh recording so I have I have a record that's in the can. Uh, it, essentially, it needs strings and uh, just a couple more tweaks in the vocals. But um, I started it in 2022 with the band that I had at the time, and then I I shelved it and went off and did Crude because I, I just needed to kind of I needed to go into a studio on my own without this big band around me to kind of I just I felt a bit lost in the middle of it all. So I've been tinkering away at this album for about a year. And it's 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 um it can come out next year, but the issue is now that I have all these new songs that are kind of pushing to get a get a look in, and uh, so it could be towards the end of next year because I want to record these new songs with this new iteration of a band, and then maybe mesh the two records together because th there is a meeting point where the two of them meet, and there's also the fact of trying to get maybe a, a new home for the for the music and maybe get a new label and some some uh somebody to help with a campaign so if there's any uh if there's any independent aussie labels listening who want to release my next album give me a call <laughs> so what are you most proud of in your career so far uh i think the determination to keep going you know just the determination to keep going and to keep the to keep the flame alive inside the flame of hope that um can be extinguished by your own demons doubt and just, uh, just, just you know, the slog because it is a slog at times as well. You know, it is, it is to keep going, to, to stay motivated, and, uh, and of course you have your dips, you know. But uh, I think just to keep going, and and the fact that I was brave enough not to, there's a saying in Ireland, you know, to take the soup, you know, to to, I had opportunities to be very sterilized and mainstream, and uh, to 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 be very formulaic and to take the easy road really essentially a few years ago when I, when um, I was first kind of coming out and and I'm glad I didn't do that you know it would have it, it, there would have been more incentives in financially and all that crap but I didn't do it and I can sleep easier at night and I'm excited by music and I'm not just on a tour bus just uh, you know just the drudgery of that I've seen that in people as well I've seen that in contemporaries you know they're just 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 getting through the day and They've got all this money and fame, and it's no good to them. You know what I mean. So, uh, so I'm glad I did. I did it on my own terms thus far, anyway. Yeah. All right, David. It's been great to chat. I'll uh, let you get back to recovering uh, from your lurgy, <laughs> <laughs> and we look, we look forward to seeing you down here in January. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for your time. Looking forward to meeting you, man. Thank you. Yeah, mate.